Hello, and welcome to Harris Academy Random's virtual open evening. My name is Gareth Stanerort, and I'm proud to be principal of this academy. Now, we understand these are strange and challenging times for all of us, and we recognise how enormous the decision is that you have in front of you. The decision of, of which secondary school to attend or where to send your son or daughter is a difficult decision to make. And we really hope that the information that we provided for you on this virtual open evening will help you understand our school and the things that are important to us a little bit more fully. We're also running open mornings, which you can attend and you can sign up for at the moment, which again should give you information on, on the school and enable you to get a feel for the school. I suppose I want to start by saying how we view these open evenings. We do not see these open evenings as an attempt for us to persuade you to attend our school. What we really want to do is we want to share our school, to show what it is that we do and the things that are important to us. And then we want students to come here who agree with our values and who agree with the ways that we do schools. You see, schools in many ways cannot act like a pick and mix buffet. There can't be a situation where we pick some things that we like, but we say, well, we don't really like that, but we'll, we'll cope with it as best we can. We have to find schools that fit with us. And our school will not be for everyone. But it may well be that the things that we believe are important and the way that we operate our school is something that you can sign up for and that you believe is right for you. And if that's the case, then we want you to apply to come and join our school. Now, what is it that makes us different? All schools will sit in front of you and all schools will say all sorts of things about, about the way their school operates. But we believe that there are certain things that make our school different. And we think that's the people. The people that take place in here, those of you who come on a, a virtual, uh, sorry, an open morning, will be able to come and see the building and come and see the facilities that we have. But a school isn't its building and it's not its facilities, it's its people. It's the staff, it's the students, it's the values that they hold. And I'll talk a bit more about our values in a moment. It's the community and the sense of community that is built within the school. And that is what we believe makes us different. We care deeply for our students and we have a deep and profound desire to serve our community. We desperately want to provide a truly outstanding school for the people of Rayner. That's something we are determined to do and determined to provide for them. I mentioned the word values earlier. The values and purpose of a school is something that's really important for you to understand and really try to get a sense of what it is the school stands for. We believe that these three words encapsulate everything that we're trying to achieve as a school. We want to create an environment where children belong, where they are accepted as they are, they're enabled to, do, to become who they want to be and they are valued for who they are as a person. Where students are believed in, where teachers see the best in them and all the staff in the building see the absolute best in them and recognise the greatness that they have within them. And hopefully through achieving these first two values, the children will then be able to become who it is that they wish to be. That they'll be able to go on to achieve great things in life and find their place in the world. Now all schools have, have values and all organisations will have values. And they're often plastered on websites and put onto walls. But for us, these values are at the very heart of who we are and what we do. They guide our decisions, they guide our actions, and they guide everything that we do in the school. We measure our success against these values. So again, it's really important that these values are things that, that you want for your children or as a student that you want for yourself. So please take some time to read the values, think about them deeply and recognise if that's for you or not. And all schools will talk about what they've achieved and, and you know, we are a high performing school. We're proud of the progress that this school has made. But schools can't really talk about exam performance at the moment. For the last two years, we've had centre assess grades and teacher assess grades. And so there is no way of comparing one school's performance against another. Before that, on GCSE performance, this school in 2016-17 and 2017-18 was in the top 25% of schools in the country and in 2018-19 in the top 30% of the schools in the country. You know, our achievements in terms of our students' exam success at GCSE has been exceptionally strong. But another indication of the success of this school is our invitation to become part of a, a leading edge partnership programme through something called the SSAT. The SSAT is a national organisation in which a vast number of schools are a part of. And within the SSAT is a group called the Leading Edge Partnership. And high performing schools are invited to become members. We were invited to become a member back in March 2020. And through that Leading Edge Partnership, we have since been accredited as, as being engaged in transforming practice in both our leadership through moral purpose and our principal curriculum design. 
this puts us in the strongest schools, even within that leading edge, high performing schools in those two areas. And that gives you a, a reflection on, on how effective as a school we are. You can also see from the screen in front of you the numerous accolades and other accreditations the school has achieved, all of which we're exceptionally proud with. We were last inspected back in May 2019 and achieved the good. And while that is a positive step on our journey as a school, it is not what we are striving for. And as I said earlier, we are striving to be an outstanding school. We want to give our students and our community that outstanding school. Now we are part of a bigger group. And we are part of the Harris Federation. The Harris Federation is, a, is a, a large group of 50 academies, both primary and secondary academies, largely in London and on the edges of London in the southeast. We are a top performing academy trust and the performance of the school of the, the Harris Federation can be seen on the slides in front of you from the last time that exam performance took place back in 2018-19. And I think the fact that we are part of this whole should give everyone real reassurance should give reassurance to students and it should give reassurance to parents because we're part of a larger family that gives us the capacity to improve our school and as a school we are held to account through the federation for the work that we do. It also provides remarkable opportunities, it provides opportunities for us to collaborate and share and compete with other schools and one of the real high points of our, of our calendar year which we're really looking forward to hopefully getting back this year is a sports day that takes place at secondary level across all the Harris Academies and our students go and compete at the Crystal Palace Stadium against other students. This is a wonderful opportunity for them to experience something that if they were in a standalone school they simply couldn't. You know Lord Harris cares deeply about this area and he cares deeply about this school and he like us is determined that it becomes an outstanding school. So let's see if we can tell you a bit more about the nuts and bolts of the school and some of the details. So what will your child learn in school as a student? What will you learn in school? We run a three year key stage three. So students in seven, eight and nine will study the subjects that are on the slide in front of you. There are some aspects to our curriculum that is slightly different perhaps to other schools. All students will study half a term of German, half a term of Spanish, half a term of French and half a term of Latin. And by Easter of year seven, they will then select the language that they wish to study for the rest of their time in their academy. You know, we do it this way, the student can start to see the commonality that exists between languages and also they can make a concrete choice about the language that they wish to study. Something that they can then own and, and feel is of huge importance and significance to them. We offer a broad and balanced curriculum so the students experience all of these subjects and have the chance to be successful in all of these areas. When we move on to GCSEs, we offer a core academic curriculum around English, Maths, Sciences, History and Geography and the languages and there is a broad range of subject choice to go alongside that. And we're continually looking for the right subjects to add to our offer. So for example, last year both GCSE Statistics and GCSE Ancient History were added to our options choices as we believe those were subjects that gave our children real opportunities. All the students are supported in making sound choices. Parents and children will meet with senior and experienced staff to discuss what is in their best interests, what their long-time aspirations are and the areas in which they are successful. So that we can really make sure that the curriculum at GCSE really suits our students. At the same time, schools are much broader than just the, the curriculum alone. The extracurricular and the trips and the experiences that are on offer. And again, you can see just a few of those on the screen in front of you from tours from Holocaust survivors, to students disappearing to go and see Google headquarters in London, to dance students suggesting going to Sadler's Wells, to the experiences that we bring in and the, and, the, and the external speakers that we bring into the school. Alongside that, and again, it's one of the real sad aspects of, of the last two years, that we haven't been able to offer trips and experiences in the way they have done previously. But previous trips that have taken place included trips to Naples and Sicily, tours to Spain, ski trips, and the uh, well-renowned can be our outdoor education experience for our students in year seven. And we're really looking forward to hopefully beginning the process of starting to run some of these trips again in the next academic year and beyond. All of this provides a real broad, broad rich and wider experience for students to take part in. You know, the clubs that we provide are wide ranging. And again, you can see a sample of them on the screen in front of you. A large number of our students take part in the Duke of Edinburgh. We have in excess of 120 students in year nine and year 10 that have signed up to take part in the bronze award at the moment. And we're looking to extend that into the silver award for some of our students as well. So there are these wonderful experiences and opportunities that lie in front of you at this school. 
And one of the things I would urge all the students to do is to grasp all of these opportunities in a secondary school. And the last time I stepped on uh, the, the stage to perform in a play was when I was at secondary school. The last time I threw a javelin was when I was in secondary school. And these are great opportunities and experiences to, uh, to experience. At the same time, we recognise that we're part of a broader community and we really want our students to contribute to a community. Every year, uh, Miss Hill and our students work hard to, to collect a, a huge amount of, of items that we then deliver to our local food bank. And we help our students to recognise that they're a, an essential and integral part of this community and we have to try and serve that. So our students have gone into uh, local uh, care homes and have gone into primary schools to do shared and partner reading schemes. And those we feel are, are of huge importance to us. And again, we're looking to, to try and expand those schemes in the year ahead. Um, and hopefully, again, as we move towards a more normal experience, these opportunities will be there. So what are the steps that we take to achieve our goals? I've said right from the word go that we uh, desire to be an outstanding school and provide an outstanding school for this community. So how do we achieve our goals? Well, firstly, we teach your child, we teach you well. You know, we have exceptionally high expectations of our students. We believe in a, an environment in classrooms where there is a high level of challenge, but also a high level of support. And we deliver a knowledge rich curriculum. The staff that teach in our school are, are excellent professionals you know, who have mastered their subject areas and we provide continuous training and development for them. And they are very, very proud to work at our school. It's a lovely reference that was made in the Austin inspection back in May 2019. The staff are proud to work in this school and they are right to feel proud of this school. We have very, very high expectations of behaviour. And again, this perhaps links back to the point that I made right at the start. That you have to decide if this school is for you. We do not tolerate low level disruption in lessons. We simply do not tolerate it. We believe all students should be able to learn and therefore we are very, very firm on behaviour. And again, this links into the, the Harris Federation. The Harris Federation is built on traditional values. You know, we believe as an organisation in traditional values. We believe in hard work. We believe in wearing our uniforms smartly and presenting ourselves well. And that's shared across all the Harris Academies. So we believe that behaviour in schools is really strong when you sweat the small stuff. So our expectations of uniform are exceptionally high. For example, you know, all students are expected to wear no jewellery at all. We simply do not allow jewellery in the school. Now, for some people, that's not right. And some of you sitting listening to this will think, well, I, I don't want that. That's, that's too big a thing for me. But we believe that where uniform expectations are very clear and where students follow those uniform expectations, then children learn to follow rules appropriately and they learn to manage their behaviour well. And we believe that if you, and I put the phrase there on the PowerPoint slide, if you sweat the small stuff and you deal with small incidents of behaviour firmly, then the larger incidents of behaviour simply don't happen. And again, there's a lovely reference from our Ofsted inspection back in May 2019, which talks about how well students behave around the school and how they behave at informal times, such as break times and lunch times. You know, we have a tough love mantra. We believe in an environment that is strict but warm, that is tough but kind. You know, we believe that's the parental model of how we look after children. You know, for my own children, I love them deeply, but I'm also very strict with them. And we believe that helps children to grow into young adults that are self-assured and can go into the world and find their place in the world. At the same time, what has to go hand in hand with these really high expectations, both of learning and of behaviour, is a really high level of care and support. And we have a pastoral team that is available all the time to provide students care and provide support. You know, and many of them simply do not have a teaching load at all, which means they are always available. They're available for students and they're available for you as parents and able to call you back or speak with you if there are concerns. We bring in three external life coaches who are able to provide support for students, provide individual guidance and counselling and mentoring. We have a healthcare professional uh, who works with us and works alongside us. And we have an exceptional SEN team are able to provide the support that's necessary for students to be really successful. All students in the school receive a learning guide and they will be the principal point of contact for them and for you as parents uh, and they provide support for students meeting them every morning and will guide them through their time at school. And again one of those lovely references that goes back to our hospital inspection back in May 2019 is that pupils feel safe in school and they feel that they can speak to staff with any concerns that they may have. And it's absolutely critical that that takes place in the school. And many of our students and many of you will have been through exceptionally difficult times in the last 18 months. 
And we're very, very aware of the emotional burden that that's placed upon students and the mental health challenges that that provides. And we provide staff that are there to care for them and support them through those difficult times. So I hope that this has started to give you a, a flavour of our school and to give you a sense of the things that are important to us and give you a sense of what we stand for. And really our goal is to secure long-term success for our students. We want them to grow into the wonderful people that they can become. And we want them then to be able to go on and find their place in the world. And we have had some remarkable success stories that, that, for our students that have gone on. You know, in front of you, you'll see some of our ex-students, some of whom have gone to Cambridge, some of whom have gone on to Princeton. Um, others have gone into high-level apprenticeships. Others have gone and found their place in the workplace and are doing exceptionally well. And we're proud of all that our students achieve. And that's our goal, to enable students to be safe, secure, well looked after, and to achieve, and to achieve great things and to go on and find their place. Really hope that has given you a flavour for the school. You know, I hope to see many of you at the open mornings over the next uh, two weeks. Um, and please contact the school if there's any further information you require or any questions you want to ask us. Thank you very much for your time.